right, so I got more Raptor projects to work on here today. Let's, uh, let's try to redeem myself from the last video where I was installing the wheels on the truck. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the funny part is, is that, you know, I leave that stuff in on purpose, right? So I took the, the this is the, the, front, the front wheel on the truck. I put it on the lift. You know, I lift the, the, the I lift the truck up, but just the way the truck is positioned, you know, the lift kind of comes up crooked, and so I lifted it because I wanted to get all four wheels off the ground, so I could just kind of go around working one at a time. And uh, I'm so used to dealing with sports car wheels, where I can just grab it and put it on. <laughs> well, these suckers weigh you know 100 pounds, uh, and so you see me fumbling through, and then people lose their minds about how stupid I, one person could possibly be. Um, and you know, I'm editing it back, and I know exactly what everybody's going to say. But you know, that's how it goes. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Sometimes, sometimes you get it nailed. Sometimes you don't. It's also very easy to sit there and watch somebody and, and critique it. And so you know, I put it out there on purpose because you know, I know, I know it. A lot of people can relate to it. So and then you know, it gives you guys that never make any mistakes um, to uh, something to yell at me about. So it works out for everybody, right? So uh, I'm going to redeem myself today on hopefully a much simpler project, but I've said that many times before that have turned into really, really long, uh, long-term ordeals. So um, this this product is really incredible. I mean, the the build quality on this is, is amazing. I mean, the powder coating is really spot on, um, and you know all the welds and everything are, are. I guess these probably aren't welded; they're punched out. Um, but the, the product, the quality of the products is just really, really nice. And so what these are, these are racks that are going in the bed of the Raptor um, so that you can store stuff. Um, I, I probably would have never stored anything on the sides of the bed until I saw these and I'm like, dang, these things are cool. I want them. Uh, and so now I just bought an ax. Uh, what else did I buy? Uh, I bought a shovel. Um, I'm going to buy a, a fire extinguisher. I bought a machete. <laughs> so I bought all the stuff to prepare me in case of a future impending zombie apocalypse. I'm going to be ready to go, right? So I'm going to have all those things on the side of the truck uh, for all the uh, all the city driving that I'm doing, all the, this local, you know, driving in this retiree community. I'm ready to go. If I need to dig a hole or if I need to uh, chop a zombie's head off, I'm going to be ready to go for that. So anyway, let's let's work on this project here. Um, I don't have those things here yet, so maybe I'll do a follow-up video. Um, but I'm going to figure out how all these different clamps and different pieces go on um, that will allow us to clamp to these to these things. But the main purpose of today's video is to get it installed, so that way we can um, you know, just show you how it's done, give you an idea of what it's like if you wanted to install it yourself. All right. So the first thing, there really isn't much to this, but the first thing that has to happen that's recommended is that on these bigger pieces that we take and we put a little rubber stopper uh, and that should, should go, so I'm looking at the directions, so it goes here and so it should go along the back like this, there's a little push pin so we'll figure out how that, how that goes when we get there. So you can buy this as a kit, I think he sells these separately as well, these fit Raptors, really any F-150 uh, I think he makes them for some other other trucks and cars as well, uh, but I was mainly interested because of uh, the look more than anything, and uh, and then it got me excited to shop for an axe. So I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but it'll be it'll be fun to play with. All right, so let me take you over to the bed here. I've got to remove a couple of parts, and uh, we'll, we'll walk through this. All right, so these I don't think will go back in. These are like the you know, OEM or factory tie downs that lock in place. So I need to get these off of here somehow. Maybe I never. There we go. So I think I've never actually taken these off. Let me grab a Torx and remove this first. This kind of stinks having a garage off site because I left all my darn tools over there. So all my impact, both the big and the small one, are both over at OGHQ. So we're gonna have to do this the good old fashioned way. And I've got to use this funky 90 degree version because my other one's broken. I got all the stuff, everything in the world it seems. But I always manage to be missing something when I need it. 
So my other ratchet, just, the gear is messed up. I think, I think you can still go and swap out a Craftsman. I think they're still lifetime warrantied, but I just haven't done it. I'd rather just buy another one. And Actually, you know what? I do have my other tool, my little ratchet. Bingo. I'll show you in a second this scar right here. The rest are from deadlifts and cleans, but the scar is from stepping back on the uh, on the F-150, the truck bed. I, uh, that was, shoot, a couple of years ago now. It took a long time to heal and still scarred forever. So now every time I do a clean or a deadlift, I mess it up again. Bed liner. I don't want to go. All right, so that's removed, unlocked. These things I know remember were a pain in the rear to get off of here. So that's right. We gotta you gotta turn the key, and lift up, so that it comes out. All right. So that's prepared. It's pretty neat. This this factory bed liner is so nice. It almost feels like it's like a plastic insert, which of course it's not. It just seems like it. All right, so we need to take this off as well. No, it's just the, uh, the bed liner's got it clogged up. All right, I'm gonna get a razor blade to snip this back here. I'm just trimming the, see how this is all hit with the bed liner. Right. I really need a camera, man. Be taking intern volunteers. We've got that removed. This way. Let's be a little smarter about this. This on first. I'm gonna make sure to keep you guys honest. I'm gonna give you something to make fun of. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be um, confused of being perfect. Yeah, I think that thing's gonna interfere a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna have to move that down a little bit to fit. Yeah. Let's see the bed liner. I think I can slide it down. this in position. Let's see if we can do this without cross-threading it. It's going to stink when I put this thing on upside down. Let's see, I don't think... Oh yeah, they do still fit. Sweet. Me uh, now messing in the world of trucks. A lot more real men around here critiquing my work than uh, in the car world. <laughs> yeah, our hook can go back in place. Wow, that thing's clean. Awesome. These things really don't fit very well. is. So leave these things on, don't take them off. Sweet. I can still reach my light. They actually sit much more flush than I thought they would. That's cool. 
Way cool. All right, let's get a little different angle here this time. So this time I'm gonna remove, now when I turn that light on, how the heck do I turn it off? There we go. So this time I'm gonna leave the whole thing on. I didn't think it was gonna fit. You're probably not supposed to. Do that with the tool. Oops. Don't do that. Just flatten this out. Literally could not be any more humid out here. Forgotten what the summer was like. Come on. Shoot, I need to move this first. Bill Wright actually suggests that you turn this around, but I think I got enough clearance on this one where I don't need to. this bracket in. All right, got our side pieces in. Cool, now let's do the others. All right, so we finished the, uh, I finished the front version. Here's the rear, all right. And so install was the exactly the same, so I, I didn't get the camera out. It was just the four bolts uh, with the difference of the rear ones. I didn't need to, I did need to move the little mount here. All right, so I needed to move that back a little bit so that it wasn't hitting. So my, my, my flip up cover mount, I needed to take this and move it back. Um, but the you know, four bolts, this one doesn't have any other, you know, other separate mounting points. Unlike the, the back section has the mount point down there near the, near the tie. But this, this gives us lots of versatility here. I'll show you in a second the, uh, what, I, what I intend to put on here. So one of the things I'm really psyched about, if you'll notice, and it may be a little hard to see on camera here. Let me go up here and get a little closer and put, a little, put up my finger in here. These are much tighter up next to the, to the, to the bed than I thought. I mean, I can barely fit. It's a, it's a, you know, a finger gap that fits behind here. I was thinking they stuck all the way out to here, right? That they stuck out much further. So that I'm really pleased with that. I really like how that, how that turned out. All right. So you, you take notice how nice and tight fitting it is up against the, you know, the bed area. Looks great. Looks very OE to me. All right, I'm running out of time here tonight. I just got back from the gym. Um, I want to just cue you, a, cue you into a couple of things. I do need to order some more parts for what I intend to do here, but I wanted to at least show you this. So we have, um, we have some quick first rubber clamps and then quick first, uh, these are a larger rubber clamp, right? So we have these and then these smaller versions, right? So what I think I'm gonna put in the bed most often would be, uh, I'm gonna put a fire extinguisher back there, I'm gonna put a machete, I'm gonna put an ax, uh, I'm gonna put, at times, I'm gonna to wanna to be able to put my, my large breaker bar, right? So actually, let me get that out, show you what I'm talking about. So what I'll be doing at times, when I'm taking trips to the mountains, you know, I'll have my trailer, but I don't have any tool storage in my trailer, right? And so what I'll likely be doing is taking and putting my torque wrench in the back, right? And what may even make sense is I, I don't even, maybe I won't even worry about the torque part of it. And I would bring this 
large half inch drive socket with me, right? And so it would make sense. So what happens is these built right uh, steel, I think these, these look like galvanized steel. Matt's going to be, Matt from Buildride is going to have a, uh, an aneurysm here of me fumbling through this. But the basic idea here is I'm going to, you bolt these through, right? So there's a bolt that goes through like so, All right? Man, these things are cool looking. I'm going to make sure to mount it so the low goes out. Makes me, sure feels like, uh, so here's what we're looking at here. It reminds me a lot of um, OG, right? That's why. I think I'm taking to these products. They look and feel like my stuff. Only maybe, they may be even better quality. <laughs> I don't really have any stuff. Everything I have is just stolen, <laughs> right? So anyway, we'd put washers on this. So my intention is we'll have a shovel, an ax, a machete, and then the opportunity to put this in the bed as well. All right, clamp it down. So when I'm taking a trip, I'll be able to lock this in and take it with me. All right, so that's 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 one of the, you know, one of the intentions to be able to throw a tool in the back and not have it bouncing around. And uh, and so so that's that's what I'm going to do with with this this thing here. I'm going to put a shovel back there. Just put some things that I normally wouldn't put back there, but because it's such a cool little storage solution, I might actually set it up so that it looks cool. <laughs> you know, so anyway, I know some of you guys are cringing at that, but hey, um, I think this is a you know, this isn't a normal product that I would normally pursue. But in the Raptor, uh, I think it's going to be cool to have some things in the back for utility uh, that uh, that I'll be able to sort of take with me from from place to place. And you know, you never know uh, when uh, when zombies show up. So so I definitely need an ax and a machete just for that. So anyway, thanks for watching. I know this isn't a complete, I haven't completed the whole solution. At least I got it installed. Uh, I'm waiting for the other parts to come. I'm gonna order a few more of these. I'm also gonna order a few more of these. I forgot to show you this one. So this solution would be, would be similar, right? So this is how we would mount a fire extinguisher or something like that, something bigger. Uh, and so I think I'm gonna need, let's see, I have, I have four of these. So one, two for this, three, four for the shovel, five, six, seven, eight. And if I do that, yeah, so I'm gonna need at least, I'm gonna need to buy at least four more of these. Uh, I'll probably buy I don't know, maybe I'll buy eight just to have extra, just to be safe. I don't foresee a need for the bigger ones outside of uh, putting a fire extinguisher in, which you know is not a bad thing to have. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this is useful, especially to you Raptor guys, F-150 guys. Uh, this stuff is great. Bolted right in, looks fantastic. The fit and finish is on my you know, level. Uh, stuff that I like. Uh, it's, you know, the quality is even better than, than what I expected. So thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to Built Right for, you know, for sending me the stuff. And uh, there's a couple of other products I'll be doing. They have a, a rear seat latch that I'll be installing as well. So I'll save that for a future video. Anyway, stay tuned for more crazy. force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, foot to the floor. floor, floor.